that's what it's going to count as. That's my interesting theory. Well, there's not. Oh, I, I'd, I'd, I'd struggle to confuse these two, but they are knights right next to each other, so I'm not saying a ton on um, issues. Cool. Okay, we're live. He Hello, everyone. Cool, okay, we're live. Oh, I need to mute the stream because I'm hearing myself with a slight delay, and it's terrifying. Yeah, actually. Yeah, you both appear to be frozen, and I'm not quite sure why. I mean, that's you're sporting a good amount of foliage, though. Ian. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Here's a. Uh, here's our new segment called Hair Watch, uh, where we assess our guest's hairstyle by freezing the thing. Um, there we go. You should both be... Uh, I feel like that could be quite funny. It's as a... There's a, a chap in my uh, office who is also uh, focally, follically challenged, uh, who says it best, Jesus is the best barber. <laughs> Although he also says it in a very thick Cameroonian accent that I'm not going to... Uh, emulate for a vast majority of reasons um predominantly because that's kind of racist no, that, that, no it's just that you can't you can't do it justice that's, it. that's exactly it he has the most wonderful voice and uh I, I cannot reflect it but if if he's listening somehow in the future <laughs> ivan this one's for you I, ivan <laughs> with the cameroonian accent now that's not his real name <laughs> <laughs> Which is also very confusing because he goes by Ivan, but he has a very Cameroonian name. Also, fun fact: he was uh, he was president of the uh, the like uh, a Cameroonian uh, like society. <laughs> and we were out once, and he called us to find out what like where we were, and. No one recognised the number, and we googled it. And it was just it was just the Cameroonian Society number, and we couldn't quite work out why someone with from that would be calling us. It was funny. Anyway, uh, hello, chaps. Sorry, I should probably introduce you. So we have a double whammy on stream tonight for several reasons. Um, a because I don't trust either of them. Told I've got no, that's horrible. Um, <laughs> mainly because uh, obviously for those of you who were tuning in last night sadly my internet died as did the stream just as i was showing off my sexy ne uh, necron shiny boys team t-shirt so i have come back today in true necron fashion reanimated with more people than i started with uh like the good old days of necrons where i could keep reanimating dead stuff um and i have rob and i have ian hi rob Hello. you're just on the uh on the the guest list as rob i hope you don't mind that Oh, what's it doesn't have my full honorific? I can I can give you a full honorifics if you want to tell me what they are. Um, general scumbag. General scumbag. Okay. In, 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 is that like a a brackets honorific? General scumbag. Okay, cool. Is it like general in? Name with a comma between them. Right. Okay. Cool. I didn't. I wasn't sure if it was a uh, like an honorific, like you know, like the actual general. Like that was you know, you've got like some like rank I don't know about. You know, you've got like lieutenant general, major general. General, general <laughs> scumbag. Just one, one tier of scumbag higher than you. Cool. Sorted. Yes, that's Rob. Hello, Rob. And uh, obviously, for those of you who came in yesterday, we have Ian. Uh, both of whom are buddies of mine from mm. the real gaming world, if anyone remembers what the real gaming world was like. And uh, and also members of the most premier all-Necron Highlander team mm. <laughs> to have ever existed in any team tournament. Uh, the award winning, no less award winning, I should say. <laughs> That's correct. Um, yeah, so who, Rob, go on, give us a bit of your. Uh, I feel like Rob should get to tell the story a little bit just because Rob had to suffer all day with a pylon. I had the worst. <laughs> the, uh, all right, it was in the, in the before times of what was it, 2019? Oh, long ago. The Cardiff. Four, uh, 4v4 team tournament where each team member had 1750 points and um, the rule of the rule of three was applied across your entire team but you weren't forced to all have like matching factions or anything you could be anyone you wanted so of course we decided to all be Necrons because YOLO 
can I just interject at that point just to say, um, I didn't know until the morning of the thing that we didn't have to all be the same team. Yeah, don't, try <laughs> don't, don't try losing your way out of this. <laughs> I was doing because we were forced to. And the unfortunately, the eighth edition Necron Codex, Codex was, um, should we say, limited. <laughs> In any options of any kind. There was one good build. Yep. Yeah. We, I, I'd say we, we had a couple. Like Ian, Ian took some of the uh, all the doomsday arc, so that was all of our anti tank gone. Yep. Uh, Scott took all the race, so that was all of our melee capacity gone. Um, and you decided to abuse yourself and Matt and take uh, how many warriors was it? A hundred. Yeah. Yeah. And and Zeus and a couple of ghost arcs. And so yeah, what was left but to just say let's go full hand and take a four hundred and ninety point model which is only good against knights. But then knights were in the meta at the time, right? Like knights were a thing. They were. They were a thing, just not in our sales count. Very clearly yeah. not. We we didn't see a single knight army against us, although there there were knight armies there. Yeah. We did, however. Yeah, I did, and he managed to roll. I think it was uh, five four pluses out of six, uh, or five five plus on his invuln out of six. And if any of them had gotten through, he would have died. But no, he, he was fine. Because to be fair, flat si was it was pylon flat six still then? It's it was six plus D three. Ah, what is it now? Oh. Doubled if it was Titanic as well. I don't know what it is now, actually. Yeah. It, it's it lost the fancy doubled if Titanic thing. Oh. We got rid of Matter. I mean, let's be honest, though. Because it realistically one shots a night every time it shoots it. Hmm. That's why you take it. Two, two wounds get through, that is that is any night gone. Yeah. yeah. But then also, like I know there was a, there was a lot of kind of. Um, argument and saltiness shall we say um if you can believe it when the necron codex dropped because people got very very cross about the changes in quantum shielding and in uh and in reanimation and i feel like this is something we probably quite discussed as a group at the time because obviously we have a a, a shiny group uh, of all of our shiny boys although i feel like we need to expand that because there's a lot more shiny people now there are. Um, i think we need to keep it because we're the og and, true um, we can have a separate meal. I mean, I'm going to throw it out there. I think the true measure of our success was the fact that uh, that this in the 2020 tournament was cancelled. Sadly, um, there was an award named after us. Is there actually? I didn't. Yeah. See that. That's yeah. Explain. It was the it was the shiny boy award or something like that, and it was for like the most fun team list. I think oh. I can't remember. Do you remember Ian? Was I there for like the, the kind of best themed lists or the best themed team or the best like yeah single army single faction? I think it was for the best yeah theme. Because I think it's I, gone. I was, I was just going to say I think our team was really just going in and hating ourselves and saying that we're gluttons for punishment. I mean, I will say when when someone first floated the idea, I yeah. did kind of say I'd do it as a bit of a joke. And then Ian was like, cool, I've booked our team in. I was like, shit. <laughs> yeah. You then, then realised how many warriors you had to paint. That's fine. <laughs> to be fair, it only took me a week to paint them. Um, because obviously, Necrons. Although I have since. One of the things I did last year was repaint my entire Necron collection, all 7,500 points of it. Um, so it's now uh, rusty rather than shiny. But I, I, I think... Exactly. I mean, although to fair, I thought I was being fun and edgy, and it turns out everyone has Rusty Necrons now, so uh, I wasn't. Um, I'm going to claim credit for it, though, even though there's no feasible reason. But I think this is why... So yesterday I teased this. Uh, one of the things I mentioned in kind of the advert for the stream on my Instagram was... Um, because I think the weirdest thing about that tournament for me now is that if you look at the four lists that were taken, so the Triple DDA, the Pylon, the Race Spam, and then the 100 Warriors, there are some Ghost Arcs, I reckon, especially with Night Nightbringer, which is also in my list, Nightbringer, Zerus, 
maybe not Xeris, but certainly Crypt decks, and then Ghost Arcs and there's many warriors you can throw at a table, is probably the most meta list of the four now. Yeah, yours is easily the best list now. Oh, although all my 100 warriors have Gorse Flares. Well, that is an issue, though. You're going to have to cut all those off. It's fine. I've got Imperium. I'm just going to get another 100 with uh, Reapers in case Flares get good. <laughs> What's I can't believe you got another good. I actually technically, so I think what I did when I, when Indomitus came out, I got three full sets of Indomitus, and then I bought a bunch of extra warriors and score packs, so I had basically maximum of everything you could have. And I actually still think I have twenty or so unbuilt Indomitus warriors, so I should be able to make those into Reapers and start that way, because I basically gave all of my uh, other warriors away to my brother-in-law. Because he wanted to play Necrons and I didn't want them anymore because I wanted to more to match. And then just replace them with a hundred new ones. <laughs> a totally normal thing that any sane human being... Yeah, but they had to match. <laughs> they had to match. <laughs> but, but it was weird because my massive Necron... Because a lot of my stuff I had in my list, I had a bunch of Scarabs which got replaced, um, a bunch of characters that got replaced, and a bunch of Warriors that got replaced. So I had this weird phase where... Pre, I had like four thousand points in Necrons, I guess. Pre, um, kind of pre Indomitus, and then I ended up post Indomitus, only having eighteen wraiths until I built the rest. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm so I've been so lazy. Like, I've had Indomitus for over a year now. I guess it's been over a year, hasn't it? Uh, no, God, no. It's like June, July. Yeah, I was going to say, it's June. It's but I mean, it's it's COVID. Time is meaningless. <laughs> yeah, and I have painted, finished, 10 warriors. <laughs> and then I've got another, like, 30 that are silver. See, I will say, though, and we've seen some of your models up on Instagram. Rob, I know I... Oh, oh that's what I've done. I broke it. Whoopsie doodles. I'm just streaming a little bit of our chat casually. Let me find... There we go, we are back. Right, I have learned that I can't change Discord tabs, which makes a lot of sense, uh, without ruining um, <laughs> Ian's picture. So, uh, sorry to those people in Vanguard whose chat about uh, spare bits or something I just streamed to the internet. But yeah, so I think, I think the thing that's worth noting about your models, Ian, is something kind of... Because people talk to me about... Because obviously, I, you know, I painted 720 grots last year and half painted about another 540 in the last week before New Year. Is people And people are always like, oh, my God, that's great. But, but the very big difference is standards. Like, especially when it comes to grots, I, like, not, not... And I don't even mean kind of in a funny way. Like, genuinely, I've got one layer of contrast per colour. And there are bits where, like... The brown I'm doing now goes slightly onto the coat, or bits where the skin is like, you know, slightly over on the clothes or whatever it is. But to us, it doesn't really bother me just because when there's so many things on the table, everyone's going to see it. From, my goal for my armies is they're going to look cohesive from four feet away, whereas obviously you guys paint a lot nicer than I do. Like when I shared your monolith. I I'd say, like, individually, sure, but there's definitely a lot to be said for just a, a big army that mm -hmm. all ties together. And, and it's always been my approach. I paint a lot of stuff prior to tournaments, like, the week before, just because I don't enjoy painting, really. Which is why we have this stream, because it forces me to paint. I remember you painting your Deathwing in, like, a night. <laughs> <laughs> that was my Ravenwing. The Ravenwing, didn't you paint them the night before the tournament? Uh, most of them, yes. Wow. But also, were, they, were they all painted on time? Then? Yep, they were all painted on time. I got my tournament points for painting. Uh, and what I've learned since is that I will paint my own Necrons and my own Grots and everything else. So I will pay people to paint for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm approaching. Like, I, I remember actually at that, um, at that team tournament mm -hmm. in Cardiff in 2019, the first matchup that I had against... I, Iron Hands, because they were the hotness at the time, mm -hmm. with, unsurprisingly, oh. Stalker Bolt Rifles and yeah. Thunder Fire Cannons. Um, like, the, the, the team 
their team was saying like, oh yeah, this guy basically just he he decided on his army less than a week ago. And it's like, yeah, it's because he was he was clearly waiting for like to find out what the best was. <laughs> but his he had technically painted them, mm. but they didn't like it was a spray and a splodge job. Yeah. And when I told him, yeah. it, like I said to his face, you realize you're not actually going to get points for painting because you haven't got anything on the bases. He frantically pulled out a sheet of stick on grass tufts. No. And started <laughs> going to town. I just like the, the problem is, I think for me, like. My my armies aren't always gonna look great, but they're always gonna look cohesive. Like from a distance, like if you don't if you pick them up, they look naff. If you look a little bit closely, you know, then they're okay. Like they they so if you don't look closely, then they're fine. You know, they look like an army. I think I feel like it's kind of a respectful thing to your opponent. Mm. Like your opponent's painted to a standard yeah. and kind of as I have no problem. Like you know, for fun nights we have, so we have a an angel point fun night. If people bring along unpainted armies, that doesn't bother me. But a tournament, I'm like, come on, like, you know, there's something, it's just something different about playing with painted models, right? Yeah. Just, it's, yeah. It is, uh, I don't know, I guess it, it's, yeah, it's, it is just, everything looks nicer, everything just feels better than, like, as well, the tournament organisers who have gone, gone to quite a bit of effort to set up tables, get yeah. the looking terrain out, and yeah, you rock up with just nothing but grey. And like I, I, I'm always in slightly too much because obviously, like I'm someone who, so I've never really enjoyed the hobby side of the hobby in terms of like you know, building and painting. I'm getting into it a lot more now with orcs. I think everyone should go through an orc phase, um, just to do silly stuff because I think it's one of those things, and it's something that I know everyone will be able to relate with, where you can kind of see an idea of how you want something to look in your head, and you try and do it, and it never looks like that, and you kind of get a bit disheartened. I, I don't mind in a casual setting, but I am mm. getting to the point where like, what I enjoy about the game the most is the spectacle of seeing it all on the table. Yeah. Like, I, have, I have games at home all the time, and I have loads of terrain that's not painted, and I'm so annoyed with myself. <laughs> like, it's, I painted my army mostly, my opponent's painted his army, and then we're fighting over some very clearly MDF. <laughs> like, so... I'm using Crusade as a way to um, drive myself when we yeah. get back to it. I'm going to be like, Crusade will only be beautiful painted stuff. Um, that makes sense. You know, and... I think um, for me, the it's grey is grey is okay. It's frustrating, but the the kicker for me is when it's someone who only ever plays grey, even if it's the same army every time. So yeah. On nights, it's I'm, I'm completely fine someone saying like, oh you know I've just I've got this army I've just just built it it's grey or it's only been spray painted it's like that's fine like you're making an effort and then next week you know it might be a little bit more painted uh, one of the characters might be done or a couple of guys in the squad will be finished up, mm. or there'll be some more colours it's like that's absolutely fine because like this is this is a real world people have real real world lives but yeah. Anyway. But when it's like, yeah, just every week is the same grey. And you see people making big efforts to present something that looks good. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. It's uh, mm. so I'm drinking some delicious, delicious whiskey. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a bit yeah. jarring. Because my favourite, I think one of my favourite bits, maybe my, my favourite bit for that weekend, apart from a guy in the was it what was the mission called where you nominate characters and only your characters can score and you get points oh, having them alive and points for scoring them intelligence secured or something now, yeah I remember the game you and so the, the point of the game was you nominate up to three characters who were carrying the intelligence you needed and basically they score points in the middle of the game um for holding objectives of holding the central objective rather and then towards the end of the game they just score points for being alive after I think turn two, and on his turn two, I was he was so he was playing a uh, a Harlequin bike and Eldar jet bike list with some fire prisms, uh, and oh, and three Eldar flies, and <laughs> I just literally moved my entire blob of an army onto the middle of the objective um, because of some actually quite poorly placed terrain. There was like a massive piece of impassable terrain between him and the objective, and I felt kind of bad. Um, and then my Nightbringer was sat in front, who was one of my characters. 
and but Zeras and the Cryptek were the other two who were just sat inside the little bubble of, of 100 warriors that were just resurrecting every turn because you could daisy chain like 100 warriors immune to morale getting buffed oh, it was great um, and he charged his Autark into a unit of warriors and he was like oh, I don't know if I should charge your Nightbringer I was like well look, if you don't charge your Nightbringer I'm going to be honest with you I'm going to um, heroically intervene him into that Autark and try and kill him uh, to which his response was, okay, fair point. And then charged the Nightbringer with his Farseer and his Warlock, who are his other two characters. Then fought... This is it. So he then fought first with his Autark to kill a bunch of, killed a bunch of warriors. The warriors all came back, like, all the warriors he killed came back next turn. The Nightbringer then interrupts and cuts the Warlock and the, uh, and the Farseer in half, as you'd imagine, because... Wounds through the wazoo. Yeah. Old, yeah, old baby nightbringer. Four attacks, twos to hit still, I think. But uh, yeah, it wasn't like amazing. He failed both of the Zimbols and just cut both in half. And on my turn, he charged the Autark and killed him. And I was like, by the by, my turn three, he had nothing left that could score. And I felt kind of bad because what I then did was uh, the nightbringer in that game killed all three characters and a uh, a. Um, fire prison, at least. And his his planes were just flying around. I think the mistake he made in that game, the chap, is he just kept flying around the board, just shooting random units of warriors, rather than shooting any one unit of warriors at a time. Excuse me. And bear in mind, I was re -ro I was rolling twice the turn for the warriors, with a four up to bring them back. I think I ended up with like six models off the board by the end of the game. It was very mean. It's one of the advantages of Necrons and Elves, because they were so bad, no one knew how to play against them. Yeah, that's fair. Because you never saw them. Mm. But then when you I remember that game. Yeah, I mean, that game was then immediately followed by the game yeah. where you have a central objective, um, which negates Invuln saves, which is one of the bits of shtick my army had. Uh, and I had to just march 100 warriors into three Iron Hand repulsors being healed for six wounds a turn each, or two being healed for six wounds a turn each because of strats and stupid characters. Um, that was the first game I ever had where I was like, I don't want to play 40k anymore today. I'm done. Luckily, it's the last game. No, it wasn't. It was the penultimate game. Yeah, I remember. Oh. It, it was... It was bad. It, it was just... It was just the most futile thing I've ever done because there's literally nothing I can do other than charge the middle of the board and just hope I score enough points before he kills everything. But his object his repulsors all just immediately obviously flew onto the objective. And like my shooting just couldn't do anything meaningful. And, and your wonderful five inch movement. Oh yeah. So far across the board. Just oh amazing. And then the next game I played who was one of our club people because we played club team last game. I played um you played Lee, didn't you? No, no, I pl uh, no, I played. Who was playing Raven Goblin Marines? Alex? No, not Alex. Uh, I can't remember. But I, pl I played Matt. That was our second game against his Drop Scions, which also not an ideal, not an ideal list for Necrons when you've got to claim middle objectives, because it just drops in front of your army. Uh, the plasma guns blow up whatever they want, and then you've got a massive line of stuff. You've got to kill everything that's dug in before you can get past them. I played that list in one of our practice games. Yeah. I played against them a bit. And I managed to, I got a first turn and managed to like drop one of the Valkyries mm. and both of his uh, both of his artillery pieces. Nice. It's just it's a very good Alpha Strike list and I just never recovered from yeah. the Alpha Strike because immediately both Ghost yeah. Falks went down. Yeah. yeah. But it was a good game, you know. We it was a friendly game, but the last game was just me marching Necromores again across. Because remember, they had like one bad terrain board per round, and so I had a building to deploy behind, so I didn't get immediately shot. And then he blew my cryptic up with a shoot round corner bolt, was anyway. And then uh, just I was just I literally had to come out from behind that march across an entire board where the only cover was a. Uh, created towards a whole bunch of marines. Didn't go well. You had you had better success, didn't you, Ian? I did, yeah. So I, I went four one. The the one I lost was against Iron Hands, and it was really close. Mm. It was in that one you were on about with the central objective with a character. Oh yeah. And the issue was 
who had a character, Iron Hands Leviathan. Oh, fucking hell. That could just look up there and not be killed. Ever. Yeah. I, I have to go at it, but, you know. I mean, wait. <laughs> When you have three Doomsday arcs, right, which are basically, realistically, innate, the best Necrons could have for anti-tank, other than, you know, maybe three pylons, and you can't kill a single Dreadnought, you know there's a problem, right? Yeah, it was, it was too much, and, you know, they fixed it. That's why, yeah. but... Uh, I, I, I don't feel like Dreadnoughts are necessary to fix nowadays. I mean, they're still... They're weird, they... The problem is the meta is damage one is still like damage two weapons mm -hmm. and they stack against dreadnoughts. Mm. So I like them because they force me to think about actually bringing some proper anti tank. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens, especially I, I I feel like Death Guard are gonna be interesting because obviously damage two so yeah, so anything that can ignore a wound is a problem for damage two. And when you have a whole army that can do that, it's be interesting whether see whether people lean into Okay, I'll just get more damage three stuff. So, like you know, maybe we see a a comeback of Tau a little bit with rocket uh, rocket suits, or whether people can go fine, sod it. I'll just go for uh... Rob is painting so finickety. It looks like his stream shows, and it's great. You just see occasional flecks of the brush. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Are people going to go damage one, or are people going to go damage three? I think we're going to see on the army. Sorry, Guardian. I was going to say, it depends on the army. Necrons are so wonderfully kitted out to mm -hmm. deal with everything at the moment because we have so much strength 5, minus 2, damage yeah. 1. Mm -hmm. It deals with every problem in the game. Yes. Um, but some armies can tech into high damage more. I think you might see Eradicators more again. Mm -hmm. Like, at the most, you see one squad at the moment. Um I think we might see two squads popping up a bit more. Mm. I mean, eradicators are hard to ever say that they're not going to be useful. Just the range, the the damage, the new melter rule for them is just amazing against anything that is like minus one damage. Mm. So I do the it's, it's interesting one for me. I wonder if uh, just Jeremy, and I feel like Death Guard's kind of knocked on the head. Because the other one, obviously, heavy bolters being a big thing now. And I wonder whether we're going to see a lot more heavy bolters. Yeah. Particularly in guard. This, yeah, this is an interesting thing. Cause it's, um, yeah. Like, guard, yeah, heavy bolters are now just better than auto cannons. Yeah, this is it. It's bizarre. Like, 50 points for th a three heavy bolter heavy weapon team squad. My only regret with guard... Well, no, I have many regrets with God. Um, but the main one at the moment is that it's still only three heavy weapon teams per heavy weapon slot, which means you can only have nine heavy nine weapon teams, uh, if unless you're taking them in units, which feels weird because it used to be that you could have uh, three units of three in a squad, right? Like in a, a single choice. This might have been back in sixth or seventh now. I'm going to say this doesn't sound um, like a thing I'm anyway. Gonna... Back in day. You can take. So you, you take three, you can get three heavy weapon teams for one slot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you're cutting out a bit. You still need to be able to get three. Hold on, I'm, I'm losing you. I'm just going to... I'm losing Ian as well. Yeah. You were cutting out, Ian. You were, you were going all robot -y. I feel like maybe you've just cracked the secret of guard. And someone's unhappy and is censoring us. Team W are stepping in. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, try again. Uh, I was going to say, um, yeah, like you can take three, so you can take nine heavy weapon teams and that's your lot. Yeah. That's the way it's always been. I've been putting them into squads as well. So, so it definitely used, I mean, I'm now thinking sixth and seventh. You could definitely, it used to be you could take a heavy weapon platoon. Which is three by three heavy weapon squads in one heavy support choice, which was nice. That's crazy. That sounds like an interesting format. Mm. It's it's kind of where I feel like, and I don't want to mention the the formation word given what happened at the end of seventh. Um, <laughs> you know the whole free rhinos for everyone. D 
Do you want to have an army that has like 10 free vehicles? Play Space Marines. But it would be interesting to see something like that for Guard. Hmm. True. Um, kind of, like, the surprising thing that I've seen is now um, Chimera are mm. becoming more and more of a thing because they're, you know, it's auto hitting. They can bring two heavy flamers. Mm -hmm. They're dirt cheap. Mm -hmm. Get you onto your objectives yeah, earlier, early, and all you do is you just move them up, charge them in, and then it's, oh no, your infantry is in melee with my, in engagement range with my Chimera. It can't shoot. But my Chimera can, and it also hit. We've, so. <laughs> we've gone from this weird thing of infantry being like disposable infantry locking up vehicles to uh, disposable vehicles locking up infantry. Exactly. Uh, apologies, my partner oh. is currently being attacked, so I'll be uh, back in a minute. Well, I was saying this, that I think the Ghost Arc's become very interesting again, because for 145 points, mm -hmm. that is a hell of a roadblock. They yes. are very hard to get to points. Yeah, true, true, true. I love, I'm sorry, I've always loved to go stark. I think they're lovely. I like, think I just... they're lovely apart from <laughs> um, I, I Actually, we need, we need to start out some go stark. So exciting to get some uh, Doomsday Cannons for my secret project. Yes, well, that reminds me. Well, you said you were... Yes, I shall talk to you. Uh... Yes, I shall talk to you uh, at some point soon about that one. Um, but yeah, it's it's the Necron. I mean, I've I've said this. Ban, sorry. If there's one thing I need, it's more unpainted Necrons. <laughs> That's why I've subscribed to Imperium. Oh, I mean, to be fair, my my kind of plan will be: I'll just subscribe, and then when the Sisters editions come out, I will either swap stuff for them, or just go and buy like three sets of each. Yeah, Forbidden Planet is the way to go. Mm. You want to order them. Order individual issues. So is that, I figure like I figure none of them, like especially look at Conquest as, a, as an example, none of them are going to lose me money, right? So, you know, I may as well uh, just go in for it and guarantee at least one. Also, like I don't have any terrain at home yeah. or anything, so it's just nice to build a little collection stuff. Like I've, I'd like to have just a few little things that I can, like you know, oh, I can take along a little sister's army to Fun Night or whatever, and people you know can just pick up and have a go. Yeah, I, I'm. I'll probably be grabbing more of the sisters' stuff because it's the stuff that was in the special box. Yeah. They did. Uh, and I, ha I have that box, but mm. I, want some, I want a couple more. Yeah, they're one of the armies that I've never owned, but I've always looked at them like they're cool. Maybe I should have some of them. Yeah, I've got a few things sitting in my pile of shame. <laughs> we don't say pile of shame in the stream, we say pile of opportunity. Yes, I have a lot of opportunities. <laughs> I've done so much brown already. One, two, three, four, five, six. And nine, 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 nine. I'm on my 20th grot of the night. Oh, beautiful! I went blue for my uh, for my Necron stuff just because I wanted to be edgy and cool, and now everyone does it. <laughs> well, I mean, as you can say that they're the Thought Dynasty, which are the coolest. My, I, my, I will be playing my the only way I know how, which is uh, Relentless Expansionist and Radwraith with as many wraiths and Scorpexes as I can fit in a list with a bunch of Scarabs. That's that's what Thought is. Oh. Thought is the uh, radioactive dynasty. Well, then, yes, I will be playing Thought. There you go. They're, like, un they're, they're in the law, and they're not an official dynasty, but they put Radwreath in, which is basically a, here's how you make them. Like how uh, they, G Dub don't want to do Tanith, but they have put in Wilderness Hunters. Which is getting a lot of play at the moment. I've been looking at this, and Wild like Guard are getting a lot of use out of Wilderness Hunters as a thing, which is quite interesting. I don't. I'm not up on my guard states. What does it do? Off the top of my head, I can't remember. Hold on, I will find out. I think it's plus. I'm pretty sure it's um like plus one, um cover basically, or it's either always have light cover or bonus to cover when you're in cover. Yeah, I mean. Giving giving guardsmen a four play for how cheap they are. Yeah. 
is, uh, is very powerful. And I think basically, yeah, it's basically the run a bunch of tanks forward and then just hide your guardsmen in terrain and uh, live your best life. Customer trench doctrines. That's all our traits. Yeah, I've been looking at some of the nav bomb traits. Mm. So really, if I had Gauss Immortals, I would be running a you know, 50 Gauss Immortals with the... There's one that's basically Bolter Discipline, but for Gauss. Oh, cool. And that means you can just have your 30-inch range Gauss Immortals firing, you know, rapid fire mm. range. And then that's great. Oh, nice. Uh, also, it is... Uh, just a uh, permanent cover save as long as you don't advance. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to yeah, presume that's been... Apologies, I am back. That's right. Were you being attacked by a cat, did you say? Uh, no, there was... Uh, it, it was just my neighbour. I, I was thinking of a witty Warhammer-related... Ah. Uh, uh, ...come up with, like, the, the grots were at it again. Ah. Uh, no, literally just uh, my neighbour was outside. I wanted to chat. Oh. Uh, wow. Uh, okay, we'll get your progress up. We're talking. Uh, I hope you were so appropriately social distanced. Uh, we, we were, yes. There were there's more than two meters between us. The bucket of grot stands for uh, good health practices. <laughs> Following the law. Yeah. Respectfully. We we're talking about um, surprising guard combos, like the fact that wilder people are using wilderness hunters more now, and how it's definitely not meant to be Tanith. Yes. Yes. It's, yeah, I've been been browsing the Reddit and trying out some ideas, and it seems like there's this big push for basically uh, two lots of nine Bulgrins, some Psyker and some support, and then just loads of bodies with uh, wilderness survivors. Which is weird, because uh, in my pile, I have two units of nine Bulgrins and a unit of nine Ogrins. I mean, I feel like you have the entire Games Workshop catalog <laughs> in your pile. These ones, these ones are alternative models of uh, Krieg Ogrins. Because uh, I have this uh, this great idea of a list, which is a Primera Psyker, um, a Lord Commissar, uh, nine Bulgrins. Oh, okay. uh, so, no, sorry. 20, yes, 27 Bulgrins, uh, 18 Ogrins. And then 30 Rattlings. Oh, <laughs> I just want to put 30... I'm going to go out on a limb and say the Rattlings are one of the best units in the Guard Codex. Oh, no, here we go. Mm. <laughs> this, is, this is debate. Not just because they're small. Because... A, you've got cheapish snipers there, what? 10 points each? 11 points each for a sniper. So, you know... You've got units of 10, so you're just fishing for a lot of sixes and mortal wounds, which is nice. Um, they get bonus, they get always get bonus, bonus to cover save, which is nice. They also have what's one of the most underrated traits in, in uh, Games Workshop, in general Warhammer history rather, which is uh, the same thing Scarabs have, which is they're just small models, which makes them really helpful because it means you can hide them really well. Um, and then the other thing they have... Yeah. so. It works against you when you put them in a building and you can't see out the windows. But, okay, exactly. But this is the thing. ITC events, I think they're great because ITC play with the magic box floor, right? As in the first floor of uh, to a building or ruin is always, um, you can't see through. Always blocks line of sight. But Rattlings have shoot and scarper, which means whenever they shoot, they can immediately then move for free, which means you can hide them in something where they can't be seen. Like It's like the old Tau battle suit rules. You then pile all ten of them out of that cover to get a good position in your turn, in your movement phase, shoot whatever you want, and then run away. And I think they're BS three. I might be lying, but it does mean you then get ten uh, BS four snipers because they're heavy, obviously. Obviously. See, my my problem with them just stems back to the issue of all snipers. <laughs> they're just not any good at actually killing characters. I mean, it. Except the one sniper, Death Marks, who I genuinely think are great. Oh, I love Death Marks. I again, Death I Marks. don't, I don't think they're good as snipers. Good for grabbing objectives, not good at killing characters. Ten Death Marks statistically gets a, a primary apothecary. 
and he is something you want to get. Yeah, fair. That is true. I'll say it's true. As, take them as Mephrit, and then you use the Mephrit strat. Every six to wound is two mortal wounds, not one. Nice. And then you've got real good odds. I think you need support for them, though. You need other stuff that can splash mortal wounds, which Necrons hmm. have. Glassmancer. That silly mal malevolent arcing. It means mm. you can put a mortal wound on a character. Yeah. No. Uh, Transdimensional Thunderbolt is another way to do it. Uh, and then, oh, there's one more. That's the other. Plasmancer. In the text Storm, if you're crazy enough to still be playing Baltech. Or, and hear me out, Plasmancer. <laughs> he Plasmancer, uh, he's a fun one. Oh, is that, he's just no, he's just nearest, isn't he? It's uh, what you're thinking of is the one I forgot, which is the psychomancer. If you give him the arcana, oh so yeah, can, yes, that can target characters. Love a target smite. Which is fine. Mm. Yeah, which reminds me, I have him around here somewhere. <laughs> mm, my my uh, loving. Friends gave me a birthday present recently, which is a psychomancer. So I'm nice. excited to build and paint him. But uh, it was quite funny when three days after opening it, they uh, I was in a call with some of them, and they were like, "Oh, have you have you painted it yet?" And it's like, "Well, no. Like, I I have lots of stuff to paint." Your friends don't pay forty k, do they? <laughs> no, they. <don't. laughs> oh, bless them. It's like, I love you all, and this is an amazing present, but I think you'll be lucky to see it painted within the next six months. <laughs> hey, Rob, we bought you something for your birthday. Oh, cool, I've just finished the first one. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's talk grots. We haven't talked about grots enough, and we'll probably kick off at about half nine tonight, because I have things to do. Um, although, we'll see. We'll see how we go. So, grots, right. Uh, so obviously we have our beautiful community grots. So I'm going to kick off by asking each of you to uh, to pick a community grot that particularly stands out to you uh, as your. I would say grot of the day, but obviously uh, we're going to have two grots of the day because of um, the stream dying yesterday, which was unfortunate. So uh, Ian, give me. Well, mine, mine is grot of yesterday, I guess. Yeah, who is your grot of yesterday? Is the one that's called Endless Midnight, which is uh, a Night Lord's grot. By our Endless. good buddy, Jose. And I've just realised that I didn't have him pre-queued because I didn't pre-queue him oh. with the new Discord layout for two people. So, uh, stand by. Tell us why you love this grot, Ian. <laughs> He's just such a little, little badass looking grot. He is a little badass looking grot. He's, you know, terrible. He's five points. He's going to die. But he looks the part. He does. I find that the thing I, I, I love the grots for two reasons. A, yes, absolutely. Because, like, yeah, they're just models that, uh, even in the grot challenge, when we do 540 grots, which will be going up to 720 grots after lockdown, because it's too easy to kill 520, uh, 40 grots. Um, so no pressure going. You both want to take on at some point, but um, yeah, they all stand in the front row. There we go. He should be coming up shortly for everyone. Um, but yeah, so I like how they used. Also, I like how hard it is to tell that some of them started life as second egg rots. There we go. There's Midnight Whisper. He's up now. He is good. <laughs> I just like the, the the devotion to like. I'm pretty sure those claws. I was I was talking to Jose when uh, he dropped off. It was in that weird window where we could do things mid lockdown when it wasn't really lockdown, and um, the his claws are uh, warp talon feet. Wow. Well, if anyone bear warp talon bits around, it's going to be Jose. <laughs> Well, exactly, yeah. Uh, Jose is, he has, I mean, he wins, he's won several best painted armies when I've been uh, at tournaments. He has some gorgeous Night Lords. He's uh, at Dementia Paints on uh, Instagram, which I should probably actually put on that page. Um, I'll pop, I'll pop them up. 
What's that, sorry? I faced Jose at the team tournament. Did you? How was he? He, Did... he, was, he was lovely. <laughs> a gentleman as he got and stay arced. What, what did he have with him? Did he have his um, Night Lords? Yeah, it was Night Lords. It was, you know, a lot of deep striking dudes, a lot of a couple of decimators, I think. Oh, dear. The, the Forge Worldy dudes. Yeah. Um, yeah, if... many, many big, big robot things that got Doomsday arced. Oh, no. It was, it was, it was a horrible. You're a terrible bully. Yeah. One of them got Veil of Darkness uh, destroyed. The Oof. Then one. I was like, no, I'm not dealing with that. I'm going to make that go away. <laughs> I love Veil of Darkness, and it was zero use to me during that entire tournament. Um, I'm trying to think what I used it for. The game against oh. Matt, I used it to... Uh, to... Um, fly off, uh, to basically drop some more in his backfield and try and blow something up, and they got immediately uh, vaporised by... Some guardsmen. So I got more Rob, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say I think uh as well because I I I had also taken one of the six I think you guys felt pity on me for the models I had to choose from. Uh so I had one of the units of destroyers that we were allowed, which oh, was yeah. the Necron staple of the time. <laughs> and um I Veil of Darkness them up in my game against Tyr one of my games against Tyranny and against three Hive Guard or six destroyers did two damage total Oof. Uh, and then this was promptly followed by the cause pylon doing a sum total of nothing to the hive type uh, and I'm not to which blame you with. My, yeah my my opponent was just like i'm i'm sorry for what the dice have, <laughs> have, have you ever been so bad your opponent's around and said you know what let's just pretend it worked <laughs> well i mean i've had other I games like that as well where a friend said you did tactically everything right, but the dice said no. It's kind of why I like 40k, though. The worst one for that, you know, oh, is Gur, bless him. We have a friend called Gur. His name, actual name is Geraint. And he's a lovely, lovely man who is the, one of the sweetest people in the world. He is a gentleman. But we played, one of the last games we played at Fun Night, we played my warrior spam list, which was, I want to say, like 30 warriors. Um, a Ghost Dark, Xeras, and a Crypt deck uh, against his six Tyranids and a Xanthrope list. Um, I didn't kill a lot of the Carnifexes initially. Um, I, I remember distinctly that at one point the um, the Carnifex, uh, the Xanthrope, and the Crypt deck had a close combat fight on top of a building because they were the only two units who could get up there. Um, which was hilarious. But I felt so bad for that game because that was a game where I had 30 warriors on the table to start with and I made 56 reanimation rolls during the course of the game. Like, stuff just wouldn't die. Like, by, but he, I, I think in the end he had killed like 65, 66 warriors in total. And it was very silly. Even in 8th edition when their frontal bad low point level. Ah, uh, yeah. Seen. Yes, they were. I, I had to stop playing them, to be honest, because yeah. it was, I felt dirty. I'd go into a game with six, if I went into a game with six destroyers, it'd be like, look, just don't bother playing, like, this This list will win. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. it go in with, like, 40 warriors, and it's like, good. Good luck. Yeah. I wish yeah. you the best. I mean, but then it was... Like, you, I kind of felt a little bit vindicated by the fact that the rest of the Codex, codex was so bad. Like, um... I just... Yeah. It, it did get too much. I had to, I had to start building strategically not good lists. <laughs> to take the Can't take any of these units, or they'll just win. Like... You could comfortably fit a Doomsday Arc into an 800 point list. You, you, you did that against my Grots. <laughs> I remember you uh, you wiped out all of my Grots. I brought 200 Grots and you killed them all. <laughs> I did. It was, it was mainly that, but I, was, I was so scared because you got the first turn and like hammered me and I was like, oh, I need to hide and reanimate. It was, it was the point at which I think one Necron... Uh, Immortal went and hid behind a wall, and then two turns later, ten Necron Immortals jumps out and just fried a bunch of grots that really brought home just how silly. Because this is it, right? 
if the reanimation protocols as they were, like we could just roll for every unit throughout the entire game, or the the quantum shielding had stayed the rules as they were, but were in a good codex, people would have just complained about it nonstop, right? Like if they were rules in the Marine Codex or something, but they were very well tempered by the fact they were in a shit codex. <laughs> There's also a codex that people, not many people like... were using. Yeah. Most of those rules, or most cases, got better. Mm. They just got less swing. Yes. Like new quantum shielding helps you more often than the old one does. So yeah. Just, the old one used to spike and be like, ah, oh, your, your fixed damage was. Which, ag- now, yes. It just means. Sometimes just don't wound you ever because they yeah. can't because they're winning on fours, mm-hmm. and then you get a five up in roll. Yeah, so you're but, still stopping getting through. You're just doing it in different ways. Also, I think so. I do like that that there's the reduction in swinginess, but I'm still salty about doomsday <laughs> cannons. I yeah, I wish they'd given them either flat shots or flat damage. You can't have d6 shots, d6 damage. Mm. But I feel like. So Especially now, the trend you've got with D3 plus 3 as being such a big thing. Yes, exactly. Like, give it D3 plus 3 damage. Every other anti tank gun we had. Mm. Like, all of our other anti tanks became D3 plus 3 or 3D3 in the case of the Lotus. It's just. And then they were like, oh, we can't make all the guns identical, so the Doom's has got to stay D6. At least make it D6 plus 3. I th- it- D6 plus 3. <laughs> just, yeah, 3D3. Yeah. Or 3 plus D3 even. Yeah. But I think... Or, I, like, D6 with a minimum of 3. Mm. I think I can understand the quantum shielding stuff though because like this edition they clearly tried to focus on making anti-tank weapons the best option for anti-tank because let's be honest, in 8th the best way to kill tanks was to be a space marine and have a bolter. Or a plasma gun. Or a plasma gun. But like yeah... Ed- <laughs> Just like, oh cool, I've got lots of bolters and I can reliably give them damage to or AP lots. So tank your tanks don't generally have inborn, so cool. There you go, your vehicle's dead because I shot twenty marines at it. The problem is though, in the Necron book, the best with tanks is still with our basic infantry. I was doing maths on it the other day on killing dreadnoughts. Mm-hmm. And focus heavies are technically the best, but only they only slightly edge out just Using Gorse Reaper Warriors. <laughs> then Gorse Reaper Warriors are silly. <laughs> they're good against. They're like if if there's ever a oh how do I deal with this question? It's always with Gorse Reaper Warriors. Mm. They deal with all of your problems all the time. Get to actually uh, try them out. So good. They're, they're <laughs> tabletop impressive. over a few games, but I've yet to really go home. But like really try Necrons. Mm. Okay. Same, I just as much as I appreciate what Tabletop Sim is doing and I, I totally understand people like it it just doesn't have the right feel for me there's just a a big black hole where you should have like the general over the table chat and the feeling of kind of like having models and stuff I can, I can. 40k isn't a very good video game yeah if I want to sit and play a video game and chat to people, there are much better ways to do that. Mm. The good stuff about 40k is the mixture of it being a game and the social stuff. Yeah. Not bother with it. It's like it's like when people play D and D. I'm like, as much as I love digital dice, I, you can't beat the clack clack of some good home dice. I'm in a I'm in a D and D at the moment, and it's it's pretty good. We just use Zoom, and it's. Mm. I mean, to be fair, I do a lot of my rolling in D&D Beyond now because I love D&D Beyond. I think it's great. I've got over the initial saltiness of having to rebuy stuff, and now I have most of the content. It's fantastic. See, I've, I've, my D&D experience is very limited, and uh, I think we used Roll20 for a lot of our stuff, and it was... Yeah. Uh, just for a newbie, it was so much easier to use. We did do a couple of in-real-life sessions, and it was... The amount of time that you spend just checking things mm. or looking up a value and with, with the computer-based options available, it was it's just a lot quicker. It's immediate. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Although it's not my new favorite thing I've seen. It's a new Kickstarter being released soon called Pixel Dice, and so there's already dice that like you can get where you know if it lands on a twenty, it will um 
it'll like flash or something. But these are fully programmable dice. So they what they charge wirelessly and they connect to your computer wirelessly. And you can program them to like just have general lighting effects going on all the time. So you can switch around. You can have it on a certain dice roll. It'll do a certain like type of animation of the lights or change lights, whatever. It sounds fantastic. Uh, they're going to be like $30 each. Uh, but I think I'm still going to buy one. Um, just because if you pick up something like a Raspberry Pi or something, you have to drive it. There's no reason why, because it's just fully codable. Uh, I don't know what language they use yet, which might be the only problem. But it does also mean that there's no reason why. Oh, and they also link to the digital tabletop stuff. So if you're using Roll20, you can roll the dice and it will tell you what the roll was on Roll20. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Technology is... Yeah, it's incredible. Not unnecessary technology. <laughs> this is it. This is. I was talking about this with my friends the other day. What they found is they found a way to roll a digital dice physically when the point of a digital dice was to replace your physical dice. So you're rolling the replacement of a physical dice with a digital dice, but rolling that digital dice physically. Um, but the main reason I want it is because there must be a way. Because if you can program it to recognize when it rolls a certain roll, there is no reason why, especially if you have a like a, a pie or something tamed with a speaker, you can program it to play noises. Oh. So like you roll a natural twenty, it's like na 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 which obviously what mine will do. It's a shame the um the seized on is no longer a thing in forty K. Roll a six. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just play just play a combination of sound factors just roll through them <laughs> I don't know why I want but I kind of want the seven C's of Rye from the Queen to play because you know C's C's uh, clearly yeah clearly didn't go down well did it I mean, to be fair, I've painted nearly 30 grots worth of brown today. Wow, that's quite intense. I mean, it's a big brush. Ian, what have you been working on? Um, a good a glass of whiskey. Oh. We're up to uh, we're up to the 50-50 warpstone and smooch green layer. Wow. Yeah. I'm up to the single <laughs> splash of uh, snake bite layer. I do, I do very bad glazing. And it just seems to work. <laughs> Fair. Just have your paints be just a tiny bit too watered down. And, and it seems to make a nice oil. <laughs> and just do layers over the top of it. So. What, what are you working with there, Rob? Uh, so I'm in my foray, in, first foray into Age of Sigma. Boo, get out. Uh, you were urge I remember at a certain fun night you were urging me to join Age of Sigma. <laughs> I quote here, it's more fun and better than 40 Um, I, I'm going to backtrack. I don't think it's better. I think it can be more fun, but I think it's also less tactical. Yes. I, like, I've watched a few let's play, uh, and it just looks a lot more... It's the perfect for things like just screaming blood for the blood god and throwing dice across the table. Yeah. Um, so I've, been working, so I mean, I've been working on some uh, blood, warrior, uh, blood reavers for that. I mean, I'm also acting like I don't have uh, 400 odd night goblins plus a bunch of fanatics and characters sat here. Gotcha. Although I have, and I'll show you guys. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna uh, show it off right now because I have it. I've about the grots. <laughs> the water grots. <laughs> Ye, ye, with with as many e's and speaking of ye oldie pale of grots, if you shortly uh, direct your attention to the stream, you will see I have a logo. Well, I have a uh, a nice picture for it. My uh, buddy, who is an artist, who is uh, who's done all the art for the grots so far, has sent me a uh, a new logo. For the oldie bucket of grots, and I love it. Come up shot. There we go. There's the new uh, logo for ye old bucket of grots. Oh wow! <laughs> I'm I, I'm very aware it's not pronounced ye old, by the way. Before I get told off by uh, 
by language students. But it's uh, in my head, it will always be ye old bucket of grots. But there you go, there's the new ye old bucket of grots, which is going to go. I need to pay them at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, although I've got about 100 or so, I reckon, grots to do brown on. And then I've got to do 540 grots worth of silver. And then I can start on the other uh, 600 or so that have arrived, slash, are due to arrive. I've got 200 arriving from Canada. And I've got currently. What I've what I've taken to doing is um I've got a block a box just filled with grots um that are like unprocessed, so need base coating and blah blah blah. And uh I've just taken to weighing them instead. Because I know a grot weighs about two to three grams. Uh, sorry, but it's about one point it's about between one point nine and two grams depending. Um and I've got currently a kilo of grots in there. Which means there must be about five hundred grots in there, I'll say. <laughs> I would love you to turn up to a tournament, say I've got this many grots, prove it, and then you your, your set of like crack scales, <laughs> and then just dump the bucket on and be like, "There's between this many." Here. <laughs> the, 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 the best thing. The uh, I think you get uh, what I have worked out is I think it's about 150 grots per liter. It's about 150 to 180 grots per liter uh, is is the measurement. But my favorite thing I've had to, I've done with that so far is when we managed to have mini vanquish. So um, were you guys there at mini vanquish? Ian, you were there, weren't you? I was. Yeah. yeah. I was, I we were, oh you yeah, of course you were on the group next to me, but we were forbidden from talking because we weren't in the same bubble. But for mini vanquish, what I had was um. I had five units of grots, four units of grots on the table at any given time. And I had four different cards. So every unit had a different color of coat. Um, the idea being that it'd be much easier to tell them apart then. But what I made sure I had just in case was uh, 180 of each of those colors of grot. So if someone did turn around to me and say, well, hang on a second, that's not a consistent army basing sk- uh, painting scheme. I go, okay, cool. Give me one minute and just plop the new ones on. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were fine. Um, it was largely just also to have a bucket there. Because I've, I've been thinking, so I'm going to go and do an LVO at some point soon, probably in the next year or two, depending obviously on uh, life stuff. But I can't, my, my problem is I can't not take the bucket with me. Like, if I'm going to go all that way, I'm in a really weird position. I can't go to the biggest tournament I've ever been to and the biggest hanging of people playing 40k I've ever been to and not take the bucket of grots and a bunch of stickers to hand out. But I also, if I'm going to go all that way, I probably shouldn't take a list that is just purely grots. So I don't really know what they're going to take. Yeah, yeah. Convert, convert up a lot of like, grots stood on other grots' shoulders. <laughs> orcs. So I am working on some stuff like that, but they're all going to be... Uh, I've decided all the orcs in the grot army are going to be squigs. Yes. Um, or similarly, or maybe some grots. So... Um, and chatting some people about that but yes uh so what I, what I might do is so at the lvo generally this sunday there's not really any play because the sunday is when the top eight play which means on the sunday what happens is people generally tend to run their own like mini tournaments and stuff so you know they'll play a few people and they'll play some games and just chill um so there is let's yes there's there's there is, there is, a, there is a Definitely a chance. I'd say one in a thousand because that's where people play. But uh, in this low volume, three damage per shot meta. Tr- you this is there with your lowly, always wounded on a two grot. <laughs> this is this is genuinely kind of a thing though. If the meta swings round to that, like rather than people going down, if people go down, right, okay. If everything, if like half the if half of the meta stuff is either not being wounded on fours in terms of like deathwing, um, or is Ignoring one damage, i.e. Dreadnoughts and um, Nurgle, yeah, a wraith guard, yeah, every, everything. If if we if that's the angle we go down, if people choose to, to overcome that with just as many damage one shots as they can, I'm absolutely screwed. If people choose to overcome that with just taking as much damage three shooting as they can, I might be all right. <laughs> oh, oh, I won't have any mech guns. 
I think the only way if I if I play a bucket of grots at the LVO, the way I play it is minimal characters. So just go for literally war bosses with power claws just to try and punch big stuff. Um and then you just fill the rest of grots. So you go minimum three hundred, probably three sixty grots. Um and then a couple of war bosses and a couple of um A couple of weird boys. Just to wing Grotz on the table. And then you just, like, fill the board, middle of the board. Because especially with smaller board sizes, you can probably cover all of the Grotz units in the um, morale immunity bubble. Would you not um, have start having issues in terms of just the area of your deployment? Uh, yes. So I know this because I know that my 540 grots uh, cover a deployment zone of about almost a 24-inch square. So yes, Isn't I... There a mission that has like a deployment zone in the middle, a little square box thing? Maybe. Um, I think in that case, what I'd have to do is just fill that with as many grots as I can and then just make sure I've got plenty of CP to hold a bunch in reserve. Because yeah, obviously the benefit is there's you know there's a, a unit cross isn't much in terms of power level. Um, so I'm blessed in this addition of having that as an option. You so, just have to yeah. say to your opponent, do you mind if I low key trial my deployment because you know exactly what it's going to look like anyway because there's not that much to bear with. Yeah. Uh, while I figure out how many cross I can and can't fit. Uh, I think basically what I need to do is. Um, reasonably given the boards are generally kind of similar uh i think what i need to do is just reasonably assume a kind of certain size of uh a certain size of what's it called like a certain uh footprint of impassable terrain that i can't stand stuff on call any ruins or anything multiple floors as a bonus and just have a, a cheat sheet for every mission deployment how many grots I can reasonably deploy. Yes. And it's like, right, cool. I'm pretty sure I can get 180 down here. So here's what I'm going to do. I literally just say, I'm going to put my characters down here, here, and here. And then every other inch is going to be filled with grots. So please go on and deploy. And I will just carry on doing this. Um, That's option one. Option two is I take a serious list uh, and a kind of boring list like my Deathwing or whatever, uh, given I now have a fully painted Deathwing army. Um, Again. <laughs> And then uh, just say on the Sunday, cool, you'll walk 2k armies uh, that you thought could win a tournament. Come and see how many crocs they can kill in five turns and just run as many back to back uh, Vegas crot challenges as I can. That'd be good. You have to have a prize. It would be good fun. It'd be interesting. One thing I've not really looked at with LVO is um, sort of how common certain lists are. Like, are there. Do you end up with sort of like six different lists really just rinse and repeat it for the most part um so a reasonable amount of yeah just because it's like what a thousand players there's a reasonable amount of variation um but there is always like a good probably third that will be very very similar lists um from either good players or people who have net listed the good players yeah because i i feel like you could after you've had a couple try with a particular list and someone comes along you can say look mate you're a nice guy but there's no point don't yeah <laughs> that list. don't want to be a dick but <laughs> you ain't gonna cut it but the uh, yeah <laughs> so far every book that's come out i can see a, a top tier list in it. yeah i i mean go on I was just going to say, like, Marines, you can make some damn good Marine lists of every chapter. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe yeah, Space Wolves are behind the curve. Yeah, but basically every... The worst thing about Space Wolves is that they're just not as good as all the other Marines. They're yeah. still Marines who are amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, the Necron book has some bloody strong lists in it. Death Guard, strong. Dark Angels, strong. Blood Angels, strong. Mm. Like, there's nothing bad. Like, Drakari's going to be the, the best. I'm interested, yeah. I think that's the, it's the first not really, really bloody tough army. They can either right make or ruin my life, depending on how they treat Hellions and Reavers. Um, because I have 60, uh, 60 Hellions and 27 Reavers waiting to do something. 
So if they're both terrible units, I am totally screwed. <laughs> but I think Necron, of those, I am going to go out on a limb proudly. And so I think the Necron Codex is probably the best codex that GW have ever written. Purely because whatever kind of army you fancy playing, realistically, there's a pretty reasonable build you can make out of it. Okay, maybe not a top table list, but, you know, there's a good list that a good player will win plenty of games with. In the same way, pretty much, if there's any kind of unit you like and you want to have that as kind of have a, a bunch of those in that list, there's very few units I think you kind of just say, if you put them in a list, they are just objectively bad lists. Like, yeah, I'd, like, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Like nothing is. Especially if the has had a, a, a kick in the points. Yeah. I think the only bad unit in the book is if, the uh, obelisk still. Yeah. Or Which, Ophidian destroyers. I mean, <laughs> oh no, they're good. <laughs> the, the only reason they're not good is Messer is the reason they're not. They, they exist to deal with a problem that doesn't exist at the moment. Mm. Sorry, which, uh, what was that? Ophidians. I don't Ophidians. like them very much. Uh, yes, Ophidians are a, a weird one. It's I think. Taking them, you really want Wraith or you want Scorpec. That's exactly it. They're half Wraith, half Scorpec, but not as good as either. They're better at clearing less tough stuff. Like if Eldar become more of a thing. Mm hmm. And Ophidians become more interesting. Yeah. And they've got good maneuverability. But this is... I, I, I think they've got... Yeah. And this is the other thing, right? It's a very future-proof codex, I think. Like, depending on... Like, there's something in there to deal with every type of threat as opposed to specific units. Like, it's, I don't look and go, how can I kill Eradicate? It's really easy. I look and I go, cool, what have I got that I can deal with? You know, multi-wound, good armor save, relatively good toughness. Oh, cool. Uh, well, okay. Uh, flares, uh, apart from Reapers. But there's always other ways of doing it as well. Yeah, it's, that is true. I still feel um, flayed ones have been hard done by. Yeah. Um, I, no, 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 no. They, I've, have you seen the maths on Novak flayed ones? I haven't. They kill a number. Nice. <laughs> Because they have, they have the, they've got two AP as an Elbot. Mm -hmm. They've got the uh, exploding stitches. They've got a fight twice st strat. True. They've got the Novok strat for attack. And if you get them into combat on the turn that you've got the plus one strength, mm -hmm. they kill, they don't just kill a knight, they comfortably kill a knight. Now to be fair, I was going to say that's a lot of resource investment, but also it's a knight. And, 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 well, they, hey Jose! Good against everything else as well. Jose says hi everyone. There is there is no unit in the game that survives twenty Nova played ones really. Yeah. But for, I think for me though the problem with them is that it comes back to that classic thing of make, making a charge after deep strike. Mm. But I, I just the thing I don't think you need to deep strike them anymore. And you just you just charge them up the board. They've got a minus one to hit strat. You put a chronomancer on them. Sure. You put a reanimate on them if you're feeling disgusting. Um, because they're a threat that needs to be dealt with. Because they'll eat you. I also feel like they're a threat people don't think needs to be dealt with. Like, you run you run some alongside, like, some score packs. Also, Jose said hi. Um, you run, like, yeah, you run alongside some score packs or something like that, and people give be like, oh shit, they need to die. And you kind of, like, sneak them in that way. And we. With Wraith, because Wraith has got a lot of firepower to get rid of. Yeah. And this is it. If you if if the payoff is, well, okay, against a good list, either your Wraith or your Flayed Ones make it into combat, that's not a bad trade off. No. no I, I, I like Flayed Ones a lot. I. And weirdly, I'm starting to really like the Psychomancer. Interesting. Like, the two, the two spooky units. Um, You're playing Spookrons. I'm going to play the Spook Rounds. Wait till Imperium comes out and there's that <laughs> issue with the played ones in it. Oh, I'm going to buy so many. I've already said, I've literally already said to Aria, if you can get them, uh, as soon as that comes out, please give me 10. Oof. Yeah, I was just like, I will have, I will have as many as you can get me. Because what? They, uh, this is it, played ones. Units up to 20? Still? Yeah, yeah. you put 60 played ones in an army. And that. Instead. I also kind of want to see how uh, spooky Necrons with 60 Fade Ones and Psychomancers fare against the Grots. 
other day would mince the grass. I um, oh, they got so many attacks. Especially because yeah, yeah. that's the thing with against the grass when like I because I in the brief window of semi normality with masks, um, I I had a crack at the uh, mm. at the grass and it was you can have as good a shooting as you like, but it just doesn't compare to even mediocre melee ability because you just get to do two lots of fighting per round. That, that's exactly it. Like You've got to kill, I mean, especially in new challenge, which will be 720, so that's, what, 180 a turn. When you, very few things can shoot, even the best shooting lists won't shoot 180 things a turn off the board, whereas good or mixed melee lists can reasonably remove 90 things. Especially with flayed ones, because flayed ones, you run them in, you mince the front unit, you then fight again into the second unit after you shoot some gaps or something, and you just... You do have to make the charge against both units that you want to go Yeah, against. yeah, so you, yeah, you have to... Yeah. But then if you shoot the front unit out a little bit with anything, it's going to be some overlap on one of the edges. Yeah. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Actually, as well, uh, I've realised the... There is one unit as well that is objectively bad in the Necron Codex. Oh, from the Oculus, obviously. oh nice. The Hexmark Destroyer. How dare you, good sir. He's, uh, don't get me wrong, he is a, a, a wonderful model. He's got some really cool rules and I absolutely love him. But he's just bad at his job. Damage one isn't helpful. But does he... He's not a character killer. No. He's, he's not a character killer. He's good at killing a horde, but... You know, we've got enough other things that can do. Saying that though, because does he yeah, get? Things we're really good at killing anyway. Does Hexmark get the um the strat that Deathmark get to drop in? Yes, he does. So this is it. I feel like there's a weird niche for him, which is against Chaos, because Chaos love to have ten outflanking cultists. Oh, you've frozen. One sec. Chaos love to have ten. Uh, outflanking cultists come and grab an objective late game and if you can take 10 cultists and you can just drop a something that's going to kill reasonably 5 of them easy like not bad yeah. I mean I'm not saying you take him in list because of that but I think he has some utility I just I wish it was his extra shot should trigger on hits not kills like yeah the, like the uh, the gene stealer guy right? Sanctus yeah no the um, oh Kelimorph Kel Yes. Just for wounds, otherwise. Yeah. It's just it, it, it would just be enough to make it a bit, bit better. Hmm. It bounces off anything tough. Well, yeah. Uh, as soon as it goes against the two two wound target, it's like you don't you may you make a one and you get one extra shot and that's it. And that's not even gonna do anything. Although again, one extra shot could be you know, you're statistically you're probably gonna do what two three wounds to a two unit two tough a two eight unit like that, so maybe it might give you the extra kill. It might do, but it's that thing of an extra kill doesn't mean much if you need to kill people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I think you're right. I think he might be the only boo But then at the same time, I can see a kind of future proof, excuse me, uh, a kind of a future... He's hilariously good against Gene Stealer cults. <laughs> yeah, true. If your entire thing is to pop up. True, yes. Unnecessary anti gene stealer cult unit. It's like, oh, you've deep struck this unit in. I'm going to counter deep strike in and kill them. <laughs> he does, he does. I guess he also has that value in just like, um, I mean, you don't want to pay that many points for a roadblock and a strat. But, you know, if you've got a unit that's holding the objective, there's, you know, two or three of them on there. If you can deep strike him in, so if, you're, if your opponent deep strikes a unit, to kind of try and clear that objective, just putting another roadblock in a way could be helpful. But again, I think in that situation, anyway, 10 death marks are better. Yes. And which is what... I love death marks. Well, this is it. That's what I love about... I love the idea of using them as a counter drop because if you're already holding an objective and the opponent drops something into clear, not only can you drop in and shoot them, but you can drop in and potentially, like, hold that objective small. Anything that puts just an unexpected roadblock in your opponent's way when it comes to objective play... Has to be all right. Yeah, I just I love death marks so much. I love their strat. Even if you have them starting on the board, it's just a oh you've deep struck anything. Well, I'll shoot it for free. Yeah. And and, you know, and damage it. Like you probably wouldn't waste the time against terminators, but 
anything one or two wounds comes in, you're gonna you're gonna get rid of a couple of them on yeah. the way in. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's it's really good against some some things, particularly. Um, I can see it being really good against uh, guard scions. Yeah. The whole, yeah. the whole shtick is it's a high value squad with no toughness. To yeah. Strike and delete something. And as soon as they appear, in, you just say, well, I'm going to remove half of their special weapons now. Mm -hmm. You save yourself a lot of free. Yeah. Also, just I, the other reason I like them with something like scions is because scions rely a lot of bubbles. Which means you can yeah. really, especially depending on where they drop on the board, you can really use that to kind of force something. So, you know, people, no one's going to drop their silent character behind their silent. Whereas if you if you don't pop the strat until they drop their first unit, they then say, cool, I'm going to drop my uh, character behind here. You're like, cool, well, uh, I'm going to stand these boys right behind them. And you kind of just use it to manipulate where your opponent's going to have to place stuff on the board. Like you suddenly just create this weird null zone they can't deploy in that wasn't there when they started deploying their bubble of stuff. Especially stuff like um the other thing about yeah, that is even if they don't kill a character, they force your opponent to hide that now. Yes. Which is good. If yeah. you poke out, you could lose your head. Mm -hmm. Death marks have enough fire. Like most snipers, the Vindicare will never kill anything. He's useless. He's terrible. But you say that, but I have two in my. I have two of them in my anti grot list. I mean, anti -grot. Mainly because I want. <laughs> so this is my my grot, my anti grot army that I'm going to take and try and take on the grots with for seven twenty, just to prove you can kill seven twenty. Is uh, two company commanders, forty guardsmen with las guns, four hellhounds. Uh, six heavy weapon, t uh, nine heavy weapon teams with mortars, thirty ratlings, and two execution squads. <laughs> because all of the assassins do really helpful things. Like against the grots, there's three things you want to be able to do. One, you want to be able to remove characters, which you can do with all your snipers, and also um, some of the characters, some of the uh, character assassins. Two is you want to beef up how much strats cost, because like. Popping crotch shields just making it more expensive is really helpful against the grots. Uh, and then, so basically, what you do is you drop in your rattlings or whatever shoot the uh, warped, and either the warped dies because of all that, because that sniper fire is going to kill them, or uh, they pop crotch shields. If they pop crotch shields, cool, you now shoot the warlord and kill the warlord. Your aim is to get as soon as you get rid of the warlord, you're against the grots. The vindicators are amazing because every single time you kill a grot in a unit, even if you only kill one, they're 50 50 to fail a morale check. Oh. And they've got 72 inch guns hitting hitting on twos and killing on twos. So you just have those two. You, you never have to worry about your range. This is it. And so you just start picking grots out from the back of units and just trying to force and whittle the units at the back down by making them fail morale and uh, making them run away. And also because the rest of the assassins are insane. The best unit to kill grots with, as I will always maintain, is Never Saw Assassin. Because it's 100 points, 8 attacks, so 4 shots with a pistol, hitting on 2s, killing on 2s. Then 8 attacks on the charge, hitting on 2s, killing on 2s, every kill is another attack. And then you can distract to fight again. So statistically in one turn it kills I think 30 without double fighting. Yeah, and, nice. and also it's small enough of a footprint to get him into uh, 2 units. So with two CP every turn, uh, an Eversaw can reliably kill 60 grots. thing is I could quite easily see those grots, well, their mates behind them killing the assassin. Yeah, potentially. Um, but then if you do, there's a chance he explodes and kills them. Mind you, that doesn't matter against orcs, does it? What's that, sorry? Have you ever saw the one that can only ever be hit on sixes? No, that's the Kalexus, Kaladus, one or two. I remember you, because I never see them anymore, they're bad. But even then, this is it. So you've then got the ones that drop in, which means that the Warpeds can't do its powers as well, and can always target him to shoot. And they've all got four attacks, which kill Grots on two, so that you know none of them are particular slouches when it comes to punching stuff. I was going to say, the, I think it's the Kaladus comes in with the, is it 
The Calder still gets the three D six inch charge. Uh, the no, the other still gets three D six charge. Um, but the Caladus, yeah, the Caladus deep strikes like D six plus three inches away, or whatever it is, something like that. Or it might be D six inches away. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I I do I do like the assassins. They are good fun because they're just so out there. Yeah. And what they can do and their abilities and it's just adds a little bit of fun. But My only regret with them is that because of the rule of three, you can't take um assassin. You can't take an assassin army. And I would love to be able to walk even if even if I had to take four detachments worth and I couldn't fill the points. Taking just four of every assassin to a fight would be fantastic fun. <laughs> I guess you're yeah you're limited to 12, 12 assassins, which is only is it twelve hundred points? Twelve hundred points. But if there's ever a twelve fifty point tournament, um, then I am going to one hundred percent take along a twelve assassin list because I think weirdly it does really well because it it deals with so many threats really well. With it, I, as well, because it's got so many deep strikes. Yeah. That's that's something that I, I love doing. If I'm playing guard and I have a lot, if I go for a really scion heavy army, uh -huh. it's just, I'll bring a bunch of fairly cheap scion squads mm -hmm. and just drip, as soon as the opponent are out of their deployment zone, just drip feed squads into it just to score things like uh, line breaker, mm -hmm. um, repair teleport homing, and things like that, because it's you can do it at your leisure. You yeah. Can do it when you want, when the situation is good, mm -hmm. and there's nothing they can do to stop you. I also think scions make um, a really good way of killing the grots. You take 150 of them with the plus six inch shooting, or plus uh, plus six oh, inches, and you just. No. I I'm gonna disagree here actually. I think. Ooh. So my uh, my justification is you can just keep drip feeding and just blasting away the front rank. Yeah. So the fun. A uh, friend played it against me because he felt like giving... He was having a little bit of just a... We were having a little narrative game. And he doesn't mm -hmm. normally play guard, but he, was, he brought some signs in it just for some fun. Um, and he took the regiment that get extra AP. Uh, mm -hmm. And on the face of it, you think, well, you know, there's plasma guns and hot shot last guns. That's, that's how the signs roll, and they have quite a lot of AP. Mm -hmm. But what he was bringing instead was flamers. Interesting. Which is something you don't bother with with science because you're paying for better ballistic skill, but and flamers also hit. But two what? flamers to every five guys, d6 shots, auto hitting, wounding Shh. grots on twos, AP minus one, so killing grots on twos. Hit. Yeah, that's that's dangerous. The only problem you'll have with that is, and this is probably shooting armies, you outrange yourself so quickly. You would. That is the problem. Um, but because flamers. Yep. True. Fire. Yep. Also, you just drop three squads in because you can take them all as troops. So you just drop four squads in, roast the first two, uh, first unit, and then you just get and you just keep drip feeding forward. So you just deep, deep, stri deep striking further forward. Exactly. But yeah. So reasons assassins are amazing for uh, everything. So I've got those sheets here. Uh, it's d6 plus three inches away. You're correct. Um, I love the fact. So um, I've been looking. At, basically, what I hadn't ever looked at is the strats for strat, uh, for assassins, and they have some really good strats. So the Caladus has a rule, which is uh, any time your opponent spends a CP in the first round of uh, first battle round on a four plus, it costs one more CP to use. You can extend that guy. Yes, you can then do that for two turns a game. Uh, yes, you can do it for two turns in the game, which is quite nice straight off the bat. Um, also, Caladus can uh, fall back and shoot, which is quite nice, especially when it's got its um, more. It does a bunch more wounds, like it can. So it's uh, I'm trying to think. It's assault one, three d six, three d six against leadership if they fail its d three mortal wounds. So it's basically a smite against the enemy's leadership in a shooting phase, which is quite nice. Um, Calexus is subtract uh, an eighteen inch minus two bubble for. Um, any psychic tests or denied witch tests, which is really nice. 
like eight inches of big old bubble, and it means it screws over the uh, the warp as well. Um, that's what it sticks up to here. Really and wish they'd given... so gone. I really wish they'd given Cesarus that instead of his <laughs> weird in peril one any double thing within twelve. Why within twelve? No one's getting Cesarus within twelve or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I am. But then, don't take me as a model well, to play him. <laughs> I mean, he was, yeah, he was staged as a melee beast as well, wasn't he? Yeah. He was no slouch in melee, you just don't want him there. Hmm. He, can, he can slap a unit of intercessors, but you don't want him against any combat player. Yeah. I actually think it's really good. If you're taking enough units, you can buff. Like 100 warriors. This is it. This is why, uh, coming back to just full circle, I, I've, I want to run the 100 warrior list again. It's, it's going to be a lot better than it was. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, right. So, collectors. I, Sorry. I, you can say, like, I, when I'm looking to tone down my lists, I'm, mm -hmm. like, limiting myself to one unit of warriors because <laughs> any more than that, and it becomes unkillable. And that's the other reason why Necron Codex is great, because you're like, hey, I want to take my troops' choices. Yeah, so uh, so Klax is also any if where, so it can always shoot Slikers within 18 inches, which is really nice for ignoring lookouts, sir. And it shoots them with an Assault D6, Strength 5, AP4, Damage 1 weapon. Which, okay, fair enough, Damage 1. But AP4, Assault assault D6 with uh, a Briscoe 2 plus, ain't bad. And also it can... Uh, Cause more wins, which is quite nice. Uh, Eversaw, as we've discussed, is brutal for like you. Ju you just charge enough time to basically any unit, and it will just murder them. Its only issue is it's only damage one, but you can have twos rerolling twos with its gauntlet at strength five or a power sword. He's basically like he's like ten played ones in one model. Yeah, basically. And then Vindicare, it's, it's weird, so Vindicare's always been the one that I'm like, yeah, cool, I want a Vindicare. But actually, Vindicare's probably the worst. But he does just remove any targets that you need to remove. His problem is that he, new character rules hurt him. Mm. You can't just leave him in a tower by himself, because he can get shot. Yeah. yeah. You need to leave him with a babysitter. And it needs to be a tough babysitter, because if you put ten guardsmen next to him, they'll die. Yeah. And he'll die. Maybe uh, Bulgrins. Yeah. Just have him walking up behind a unit of Bulgrins. But then they get some really decent strats I never really knew. Um, so the Calidus gets um, advanced in charge for 1 CP, gets advanced in charge and minus 1 to be hit in combat, which is nice. The Calexus. Um, oh, that's the only reason the Calexus is badass. Uh, because you know the uh, Assault D6 gun. Uh, so if you're within 18 inches of Psyker, and also it's only within 18 inches of Psyker, it's not targeting a Psyker. So you've got a uh, Assault. So you, you've got a Psyker within 18 inches. It's Assault D6, Strength 5, AP4. For one CP, that gun becomes damage, th damage D3. So just it will just blend anything. I guess as well when if you're playing a guard army and you take the strat mm -hmm. where you get to pick one of your assassins yeah. at the start of the game. If you see a psycho heavy army, you take that along yeah. with secondaries for killing psychos. Yeah. And... Like you just put one down on the table against Grey Knights and you just win the game. I mean Grey you, you put an army down against Okay, yeah, fair. Grey Knights aren't a great position. Yeah. But like yeah, you, know, you look at something like something that's running um Mortarian's a psycho, isn't he? He is, yeah. Good luck killing him. I'm not saying you should kill him, but I'm saying Mortarian's gonna be in the thick of it if you've suddenly got a D three damage gun with a a bunch of damage and no one's getting their psychic tests off, well, not a terrible thing. Uh, I mean D three is not amazing against him because he's minus in one. Yeah, no, I don't no, I don't think I don't think you use it to kill Mortarian. I think the best way to kill Mortarian is to kill everything around him. Um, and then just hope he doesn't kill you yeah. before you do that. 
Well, the best way to kill Mortarion is to be Necron. Yeah. Nightbringer. Nightbr this is it. I, feel, I still feel like Nightbringer is the best thing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mortarion. I, I, I think in a prolonged fight, he doesn't win, but he's also like 150 points cheaper. Yeah. He doesn't win, but he he, he takes him out of the game. Yeah. He means that you can kill Mortarion. Because you will have softened Mortarion up before that fight happens. So. Yeah. So, with your death marks. Yeah. <laughs> with your ghosts again, ghosts. <laughs> they deal with every problem. Like a you know, twenty ghost warriors, I think after all of his defenses and his five up shrug, you probably get like five, four or five wounds through. Mm. Uh, like that's not amazing, but you know you've got a lot of warriors. Mm -hmm. if you chip six wounds off him, then the Nightbringer will kill him. Especially because the Nightbringer will chip wounds off him with his uh, katan powers on the way in. Mm -hmm. I tell you the other reason I love Klexus, just randomly, uh, because Klexus also has a power to, and weirdly, it's a three-inch range, which means you don't need to be in engagement range. Um, for two CP, every single enemy unit within three inches of the Klexus um, can't be chosen to fight until all other units have do so, even if they charged. That's really which is interesting. Um, the yeah. Which is interesting because. The, the given that the wording explicitly so it then has the if they have a rule that would allow them to fight first then they fight in normal order um, so I'm glad they added the even if they charge bit because uh, the whole weird bone rule about that now so on the on on the topic of odd things that are close range but still ranged a bit of that I know <laughs> that I saw about recently is, um, again, with the Necrons, mm -hmm. the Radreef yep. um, <laughs> dynasty you trait. Is, the, uh, the if, you're, if you're within one inch, mm -hmm. you minus one to their toughness. Yep. And yes, as you point out, Ian, there is a Warlord trait for add three inches to your uh, Oh, trait. shit. And also, there is a command protocol which adds another three inches to... Oh your uh, auras. So your catacomb command barge, which is a <laughs> massive model anyway, <laughs> and can be hidden as a character, anything within seven inches of him loses toughness, which in the shooting phase... That's incredibly interesting. I never thought about that before. Because that's it, my big problem with it... I, but I, My big problem with that rule recently is that, that Nurgle now just get it for free and with range, and it gets better as the game goes on. But actually, like, that's yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's, um, yeah. I don't outside of Mortarian being a bit much. I actually think the Death Guard book is very balanced with the rest of this. Yeah, I think they are. They, they I think they're what they should be. They don't kill stuff particularly well, but they yeah. definitely don't die. Yeah, yeah. Which is well, what that's you, nice. Is like that's, I think that's something that we're seeing in these codexes for this edition so far. Is there is a lot more. Theme. Thematic, thematic yeah. Theme. Yeah. You can take, like, there's a bit of a focus on destroyers. You can go like, hardcore into them, or you can go hardcore into your canoptics. And just like the lore, Space Marines never lose a battle. Exactly. <laughs> uh, they, they, they win every engagement. I mean, I love that Marines continue to have a terrible matchup against us. Because mm -hmm. that was the thing in eight. Even though Marines were amazing and then sucked. We had a quite good matchup. Mm. With all the stuff that we did have that was good, it was just really excellent against Marines. Yeah, absolutely. And now, again, all of our stuff is pretty good against Marines. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wonder how much of that is just um, because we're a codex, a new Codex army. And as we see more Codexes come out, will they have the tools to deal with Space Marines better? I mean, you'd hope so, because I feel like the, the, the main issue with pretty much all the Codexes last edition was that none of them were built... Like, Marine... Me mech has always been what Codex and Balance against, right? The balance for all, all armies has always been how well do they kill Tactical Marines? And the problem is, when you suddenly introduce a new standard, which is, oh, it's a Tactical Marine with two wounds, and the whole... Two. Yeah. The whole army, uh, the, the whole system just goes, uh, what? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I hope we'll become better, but I think we do have. 
a uniquely good matchup. Our mm. basic troops are just excellent at killing Marines. Yeah. 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 Wound on threes, put them on a two, uh, five up save. Yeah. Right. I've also just realised it is uh, 10 past 10. So uh, I think we can probably wind up there. I have painted 55. Uh, 61 grots uh, of brown today, which is nice. So uh, thank you both for joining me. Yes. You're very welcome. We'll have you on again sometime. Uh, thank you for the Necron chat. It's always a pleasure. And uh, I will see you all on Monday where I have another very special guest, which I'm very excited about. So I will see you all then. Cheerio. Bye.